thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation, also to you and you uh, wider. Um, let's talk uh, trash. Um, as um, a trash is probably one of those, you know, facts of life, together with uh, taxes and, and death. Everyone produces trash. It's impossible not to produce trash. It's uh, uh, there are some some environmentalists uh, advocate for a zero waste society. It's impossible. Uh, there is some, uh, because of the law of physics, uh, trash is uh, in inevitable. So, um, as uh, 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 Ivan said, uh, 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 the um, urbanization is proceeding at a, at a fast pace in Africa. So, and uh, one of the uh, urban waste management is one, one of the worst problems, one of the most pressing environmental problems in, in, in Africa, especially sub Saharan Africa. And uh, it's a neglected, uh, it's in many cases, it's a non issue. It, it uh, the, gets uh, not a lot of uh, attention from policymakers or even from researchers. And there's also an interesting that I call North-South Continental Divide. I, I'll talk to brief, uh, more about this. So um, we can focus here on, this is, these are the latest UN population projections. As you can see here, the urban population in Africa between now and 2050 it's going to increase by 851 million people. So it's less than in, in Asia. You know, in Africa, in, in Asia, almost 1.4 uh, 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 billion people will add to the, to the urban population. But in Africa, all, both is the only major region with both the urban and the rural population are going to increase significantly. And uh, the more people there are, the more waste that is generated. And not only that, but also economic, uh, pop, economic growth also uh, uh, wealthier people generate more waste than poorer people. So the combination of uh, more people uh, in urban areas and the, uh, uh, wealthier uh, are going to um, increase significantly the, uh, the amount of waste that needs to be uh, um, managed. Uh, as you might expect, the higher the, uh, the income of a country, uh, the, the better off it is in terms of waste management. As you can see, the um, developed countries basically collect the totality of the waste that they generate, and they give 100% proper disposal. As you, middle income are in the middle, as also in terms of uh, waste collection, collect like 60% and dispose of about 30% of, the, of their waste uh, properly. Uh, but low income uh, in sub-Saharan Africa would be uh, in, uh, in this category, only for, collect only 40% of the waste that they generate, and the final proper disposal only 5% of the waste. So it's a, it's a serious problem. And we can see here now by, by region, uh, uh, OECD, mostly developed countries, uh, collect 97% of the waste. At the uh, Middle East and North Africa collect 85%. This is the highest collection rate in the developing world. But so, when you see Sub-Saharan Africa has the lowest, the lowest collection rate. This is what I meant by north-south divide within Africa. North Africa is relatively better off in terms of collection and, and management. And south, uh, the, uh, south of the Sahara is, is the, it's struggling. It's the most, uh, the region that is struggling the most in the developing world. And we can see uh, here in terms of uh, projections, uh, in, in terms of population, uh, this is uh, uh, based on World Bank data. So between uh, 2010 and 2025, uh, the urban population is, ba is basically going to double. You know, this is the urban population in blue. It's going to double. But the waste generation, roughly, is almost going to triple. Going to triple. Because there's uh, wealthier people and more, um, the combination of population and economic growth is going uh, to triple the generation of waste. So, and um, this um, waste, uh, the uh, insufficient waste collection, inadequate uh, disposal, present several problems. One, uh, uh, the, the, one of the main ones is that it uh, uh, creates air, water, and land pollution and uh, affects the uh, human, human health and the, the environment. Uh, also, many cities in the continent today are unable to provide this one management services. So what is gonna, if they cannot provide the service now, what is going to happen you know, within 10, 20, or 30 years is going to be a serious, serious problem. So uh, also a common is that they use inappropriate technologies. Many cities throughout, um, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, they believe that the, sol the solution to the waste, pro waste uh, problems is the use of more technology like they use in, in Europe, in Japan, in the US. 
So they, and sometimes it's completely inappropriate to the conditions, that are, to the African conditions. And as I mentioned, it's a worsening trend in, in the near future. Uh, just a, an example, I was, in, I was in Sierra Leone a couple of, uh, uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, this, you can see this all over the place. In Freetown, the, the capital, you can see garbage, trash all over the place. They, uh, they collect, uh, the municipality collects about 38% of the waste. So there's trash all over the place. And also there's, there's not a single sanitary landfill in the entire country. So all the trash, so the trash that is collected is sent to open dumps like this. You can see the open dump. This is in uh, Freetown. There are two main uh, open dumps there. And you can see here the open dump basically is surrounded, surrounded by, uh, uh, I think these settlements are informal. <laughs> I think they are uh, slum areas because the, uh, the land around the dumps is uh, undesirable. So sometimes it's free or cheap to live there. But it obviously has a serious impact on, on, the, on their health. Sorry? Yes? Yes? <laughs> so the informal waste sector, or IWS, it's, uh, the, the World Bank estimated about 1% of the urban population in the developing world uh, survive by collecting, managing, process, processing waste. And so that this about, about 15 million people worldwide, and this would be about 2.5 million in Africa. So, and with an economic impact of billions of billions of dollars. Um, the, uh, the informal waste sector, people if, uh, tra having traditionally poor, ignored, exploited, or repressed. Um, and uh, there are four main categories in this uh, IWS. The first one is scavengers or waste pickers. The second one, informal waste collectors. Uh, the third one, manufacturing with waste material. People make stuff, consumer products, um, and a provision of services. So uh, the IWS workers are uh, one, of, one of the most vulnerable segments of the population. They are recent migrants uh, from uh, rural areas or even from some other countries. They are usually unemployed uh, widows that lost their husbands and they, they have no other way, no other means to, to, to support themselves or, the, or their children. Uh, a lot of people disabled, uh, elderly, and even children. Uh, uh, child labor is really common in this, in this sector. So um, uh, evidence experienced in uh, Africa and, uh, and in other regions, in uh, Asia and Latin America, has shown that, they, when, that when the IWS is supported, it can create jobs, reduce poverty, supply inexpensive materials to industry, and uh, do, thus improving its uh, competitiveness. And it can also reduce pollution. Recycling materials reduces pollution. It also conserves natural resources instead of uh, uh, consuming virgin resources by reusing and recovering a more circular economy. It uh, can conserve natural resources. It can also save uh, uh, cities to, uh, the, in the collection and disposal of waste. In some cases, it's really impressive. In some places, uh, like in Indonesia, the scavengers uh, recover 30% of the waste. So that reduces the 30% the uh, collection costs and disposal to the, to the municipalities. And it can also reduce greenhouse emissions because uh, by recycling um, paper, glass, metals, and so forth, uh, it, it requires less energy than uh, uh, using virgin materials. And also by um, uh, uh, composting, organic waste also reduces uh, methane. So, and yet, despite that, that, that it can be, uh, 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 that it can have social, economic, and environmental benefits, in uh, the IWS activities are illegal in most African countries. So there is not a single country where there is their promotion activities to help this, this sector. Not a single country. So there are no government policies, no programs linking the IWS to poverty, which uh, there are definitely linkages. It, it can reduce, uh, poverty can be reduced. The waste management and green growth. It's, it's, uh, it's an open area. There's, there's, uh, no country has, has done that. So in terms of more specifically, uh, think about uh, Africa, there are some, um, the IWS in Africa is very active as in, as in other regions. It's, it's, uh, there are some grassroots efforts to make a living and satisfy a social need. There are also people with a lot of uh, very active entrepreneurial activity. They, 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 they want to invest their own resources to satisfy a social need. And in some cases, they provide, uh, there is need for, for, this, for these activities. So they, uh, they satisfy the other people's uh, needs for these uh, services and uh, materials. And also, they also tend to, to, do, to use appropriate technologies. I'll, 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 I'll show you uh, one ex uh, examples of this. 
So this is the way it is done. This is in Lagos, uh, Nigeria. So a uh, collection of waste happens all over, all over the cities and in um, uh, public spaces in uh, city and in uh, streets of the streets, like you see here, this person collecting cardboard. The, the use of uh, push carts is also very, very common, like here. And this person collecting, I think this is, these are cardboard tubes. So they, anything that has a value, they'll, they'll recover it. And this is uh, the way the scavenger community lives in the, uh, uh, near the main dump in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. You can see the, uh, the, um, the conditions. And um, it's just, just an, um, in, uh, this is uh, the main dump uh, near uh, Nairobi. You can see the, uh, obviously this is one of the main uh, ways in which uh, people recover uh, waste around the dumps. You can see here that the, these people basically uh, live, um, well in some, in some cases live around the dumps, but they work in these conditions. You can see of, um, some uh, smoke and uh, uh, sometimes a lot of flies and uh, emanations, so toxic emanations. It, it, it's impressive in some places. So briefly, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, now uh, South Africa. There, uh, uh, scavengers are popularly known as salvagers or reclaimers. They are traditionally black before and after the apartheid. And uh, despite the uh, official uh, government policy of black economic empowerment, basically they have been even ignored. In national policies, or, or, uh, they, they, they are not even mentioned in any legislation or national programs. And um, some of that is worrying, a trend that is worrying, is that many cities are starting to sell their right to recover recyclables to private companies. So instead of supporting the grassroots efforts, instead of supporting the, the waste pickers or the salvagers, they are giving the... Uh, the, um, the potential benefit to companies, the private companies. So there's the risk that uh, instead of um, promoting grassroots development, they are helping, you know, instead of um, uh, helping develop the grassroots groups, they will uh, uh, benefit the, the better off, the, the people that, uh, that are already better off. So there are three municipalities that are very, very interesting. The first one, uh, they banned scavenging in the local landfill. And this, has, this had, a, a, as you can see, this, uh, the, uh, the scavengers still uh, stick into the landfill at certain areas. They can only do it for a couple of, for a couple of hours a day. And you can see there, there that reduced that repression policy from the municipality reduced their income by 80%. So before they could even send their children to school, they were the, the earning a decent income. And now they're struggling because of the repressive government policy. The second one, and um, at Simaholo municipality, they allow scavengers, but they are forced to sell them to a black economic empowerment company. Two black professionals form this company, and now they have the right to, uh, all the scavengers in the municipality have to sell to them. So instead of, uh, as before, in the apartheid, they, they, they would be able to, uh, instead of having white masters, now they, could, they, they would have black masters. So, but still the result could be the same. Uh, exploitation and, and, and lack of uh, opportunities. The third one, they, they are trying to incorporate the informal waste sector workers, but they are not part of the process. So they are, they are uh, having some protection uh, um, as a, uh, uh, um, measurements, uh, but there are no uh, um, promotion, no promotion activities. They're not part of the, of the decision making process. And now let's go to Tunisia also. In, in the, um, this is a very interesting program. The Ecolef program was founded in 1997. It's a national program for the recovery of um, post-consumer packaging. Uh, so trash um, uh, containers. And uh, in, they initially signed a contract with two private companies. And these private companies put containers throughout the countries, so throughout the country, so that uh, people on a, on a voluntary basis just put the containers there, you know, the, the, the plastic bottles or any other uh, containers they could put in, in the, in the, um, in the um, right, thank you. But this resulted in high uh, collection costs. People just didn't care. They, they just didn't, didn't put the, the trash in the, the collection uh, the, in, their, uh, in the containers. So the government changed, had to, had to change an, an approach and decided to pay people for, by kilo by the kilo of the material. So they, this, of course, they encouraged all the scavengers to, um, to create, uh, provided opportunities for about 11,000 poor individuals who are now better off. They created my, micro enterprises, and this increased the, increased the volume and reduced collection costs. So 
the incorporation of the uh, IWS can be beneficial. This is just uh, one person collecting some stuff. In Egypt, Egypt is um, in Cairo, they manage about 60% of the city's waste. And re they recycle 80% of each ton that they collect. This is one of the highest recycling uh, rates in the world. And despite this, the government has never been supportive. Um, uh, the, um, in 2002, the government awarded uh, con contracts to private companies to collect waste. And seven years later, the government has had to admit that it has been a failure, that despite the, the, those private companies, uh, the, the service was worse than seven years before. So the privatization did not work. And also in 2009, the government ordered all pigs killed uh, because the, the pigs con uh, consumed all the organic waste, food leftovers and so forth, and because of uh, flu fears. There was, there was not a single case of flu, swine flu in the country, and yet the government ordered all uh, all pill pigs uh, to be killed. And today, because of that, because there are no pigs to eat the organic food, now in Cairo, you can see organic waste all over the place. So. And uh, here are some that used to be, the, uh, a collection used to be done using donkey carts. The government uh, banned the donkey carts. Then the, the uh, IWS workers invested or uh, got loans to buy uh, trucks. Now they use mostly these this trucks for collection. They do... Uh, Sorting, and as you can see here, they sort, uh, they're sorting plastics and they manufacture products from the waste that they, uh, that they uh, recover. They also make all kinds of consumer products like rugs, quilts, you can see here, clothes. The, all of this is from uh, recovered waste. And uh, paper. They also recycle paper. So in terms of, um, of income, obviously poverty is multidimensional. Here I'm only, I'm only talking about income. And you can see here, um, even when they are not organized, when waste pickers are not organized, like in Manila or in Delhi, they, earn, they can earn more, more than the, than the uh, poverty line. As you can see here, the Cairo, the ones, that, the ones that I showed, this is when they combine waste collection and recycling. So it can be lucrative waste, when they combine waste collection and, and recycling. And uh, this here, these two, these uh, people in, uh, in Mexico, in this municipality, they also com combine waste collection and recycling. And here, the highest in, uh, in this in Mexico, these two cities in Mexico, is when they combine, uh, um, when they do uh, separation, re uh, recovery of recyclables separated at the source. This is, uh, they can be highly productive. Um, I don't have a lot of time to talk about this, but basically, uh, Africa can learn. It, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of, a lot, a lot of experience in, Afri in Asia and in Latin America. Right now, there's already legal recognition and national programs for, for the uh, IWS workers in Brazil, Colombia, India, Indonesia, and the Philippines. And um, there is um, the efforts that or, uh, the, to get organized, to get uh, supportive policies are more advanced in Latin America. The World Bank and, and the Inter-American Development Bank now support the uh, integration and working with, with the IWS. And uh, I will show briefly, there's well, more than a, south, a thousand uh, worker cooperatives in South America. And uh, Brazil is the most advanced country in terms of working with the IWS and the government supporting their activities. You can see here, there's, uh, there's, um, they uh, have a, a national movement of uh, waste pickers. They organize national march, marches. Uh, and because of that, the uh, educational campaign to the educate society and policymakers. And here, this is a former president, Lula da Silva. Uh, Brazil is the only country in the world where the president uh, met regularly with the waste pickers. That, that shows the personal commitment of the, of the, of the, of the president. So, um, well, I'll skip this. So there are opportunities for uh, creating PPPs, including uh, the uh, uh, informal sector like this in, in Colombia, in Bogota for uh, waste collection, recycling plant also with the waste pickers, uh, housing units, these are some, uh, I, I, I don't have the before, the way they before, the housing where they believe before, but this is the after. Okay, in terms of conclusions, so Africa will face significant challenges in the waste management in the coming decades. It tends to become worse. Um, but the uh, IWC can um, uh, render uh, social, economic, and environmental benefits the IWC can be part of the solution. 
uh, and the, uh, but if the development potential is, uh, is harnessed by appropriate uh, policies. And finally, Africa can learn, as I showed, uh, can learn the lessons, the lessons learned and be best practices from Asia and from Latin America. So it, there are solutions already. There are models that are working. So Africa just needs to, to learn from the other, even from within, from within Africa. There are, there are already some lessons, as I showed from Tunisia and, and Cairo, and some of the lessons that are being learned in, in South Africa. So if you want to want to learn more about this, you can read my book that I, I wrote a couple of weeks ago, like years years ago.